I've been training dogs for over 25 years. In that time, I've also become a doctor of chiropractic and a certified animal chiropractor. Too often, people come to see me with injured dogs that are the result of things that they are doing in their everyday life and they don't even know it. I'm Instructor Meg, welcome back to McCann Dogs. Oftentimes, I see pet parents doing their absolute best to exercise their dogs, but there are a few things that we can do incorrectly that can actually harm our dogs. One of the first things I see are owners that are trying to physically exhaust their dogs to the best of their ability. So they do lots of high intensity retrieves, high intensity chuck -its, frisbee, anything that their dog really loves. The problem with that is, is that without proper warm up, without proper cool down, and with too many throws, we're really risking our dog's health. I see dogs all the time that are played with until the point of fatigue, and then even sometimes past that point. The other thing that I often see is what I call weekend warrior syndrome. That's a dog that might get the walk around the neighborhood every evening, maybe a block or two, due to their owner's very busy schedules. But then on the weekends, when you have a little bit more time, you take them on really long walks or hikes, sometimes even upwards of 10 or 15 kilometers. That often then results in a dog that doesn't have adequate exercise all week, but again, is stressed to the point of fatigue or injury on those weekends when by doing what you think is best for them, you're giving them too much. We need a balance here. We need dogs that are exercised every day, but not so much that it's going to hurt them, both mentally and physically. So what do we do instead? For one, being able to recognize the signs of fatigue in your dog or knowing when to quit is really important. In fact, I want to stop before my dog is showing those signs of fatigue. So perhaps instead of throwing 10 balls, you're stopping when your dog's only had five. Maybe seeing if your dog is showing less enthusiasm, you try to quit before that point. If your dog is showing less uh, speed with the things that you're asking them to do, those are all signs that your dog is doing too much. Sometimes a dog even shows fatigue by mentally not being as sharp or as willing to do things for you. My goal is to always quit before I see any of those signs in my dog. The other thing that I try to do to ensure I'm not having this weekend warrior syndrome myself is having daily walks, perhaps a little bit longer, even if you need to, a shorter walk in the morning, a shorter walk in the evening in order to get that same amount of exercise and not pushing things too far on the weekends just because I'm enjoying my time with my dog. You need to be careful that you are not asking too much of a dog, especially at an early age and a later age in life. The awesome things about dogs, most of them, is that they want to play with you, they want to engage, they want to work, but they don't know when to quit. There are many dogs that will play to the point of injury, fatigue, and these types of dogs need to be told when to stop, and that's your responsibility. The other thing we need to be quite careful about is that the dogs need to be of a healthy weight. If your dog is overweight, that is putting significantly more stress on all of the tissues in their body. So if your dog has an extra layer of fat on them, they shouldn't be going hard right now. That is going to result in a dog who is likely to injure themselves. It is our, also our responsibility that we keep our dogs nice and trim. One of the other things that I'm very passionate about is making sure that dogs are trained on safe training surfaces. Here at the hall, we have wonderful rubber floors. This is great for dogs walking, for playing, for retrieving, any of the exercises that we ask them to do. When I'm training my puppies at home, I try to choose surfaces that are going to encourage good traction and safety. So even when my eight week old puppies come home and I'm working on some simple skills or some trick training, I make sure that I have a carpet, a rubber floor, even some foam mats that I can put out to give the puppy good purchase when I'm asking them to do things. That's going to build their confidence and it's going to ensure that they're not slipping and sliding. This is not just for retrieving or for playing. Even simple obedience skills, I like to work on when my dogs have good footing. I don't wanna have a dog run down my stairs in my house and then slip out on the floor as they try to get out the back door. That is a perfect location for putting a carpet runner or a yoga mat to ensure that the dog has good footing all the way from the kitchen to the back door where they're going out to go to the bathroom. I've talked about some indoor surface issues. It's also important to talk about outdoor surfaces. When you're exercising your dog, it's important that they also have good footing when you're playing with them outside. When I look outside, if I'm gonna be engaging with my dog, taking them on for a run, letting them play in the park, 
I'm gonna make sure that I'm doing that on nice dry grass. Living in Canada, we deal with a lot of ice. That's something that I take very seriously. I'm not gonna take my dogs on a long hike on an icy trail at any time. Doesn't matter what age they are. This is something to be aware of because dogs don't always know to slow down. They don't know how to keep themselves safe. So it's up to you to choose where they get to run and when they get to run. There are a few activities that I don't let my dogs do, especially from a very young age. One behavior that we know can be very damaging to a young puppy is jumping from heights, especially repeatedly. So I don't allow my puppies to jump in and out of my car. I don't allow them to jump on and off of my couch or on and off of my bed. If you have a small puppy, best thing to do, pick them up, lift them up to put them into their crate in the car every single time right now. Do the same thing when they're exiting the car. If you have a larger dog or an older dog, they make wonderful dog ramps if it's too difficult for you to lift your dog into the car. No matter what though, we do not want to allow them to repeatedly hurt themselves by jamming those joints, jumping in and out of those vehicles. Another area that I'm commonly seeing injuries in dogs is because of improper use of toys or improper play. When we're retrieving or playing with our dogs, it's important that the toy is not going over top of their head. So if a dog is really enthusiastic, they're leaping, launching, twisting their body, and landing improperly when they go to retrieve that toy. For some dogs, it's actually not the toy's fault. The dog is so excited about that toy that they are not taking good care of their bodies. I have a border collie that when I try to retrieve with her, she will go so fast that she will actually hurt her body, jamming into the grass, coming up with grass all through her mouth in order to get that toy in time. For this dog, I do a lot of throws where I have her beside me, I toss the toy, I wait for it to stop moving, we call that a dead toy, then I give her permission and send her out to get that toy. If I was to allow her to race and launch after the toy, she might flip, she might roll, she might jam her front feet, all of which could result in injury, especially when you consider that over the lifetime of a dog, they might do this hundreds or thousands of times. It's not one retrieve that's going to get them, it's likely going to be those repeated retrieves that's doing damage or risk to their bodies. You also need to consider the setup of your house. In my house, I have stairs. I'm not going to discourage owners from allowing their puppy to do stairs, but I will say I encourage them to teach them how to do them safely. I often start with just one stair at a time, putting the puppy on the stairs, luring them and rewarding them for going down the stairs slowly and thoughtfully. If your puppy can't be slow and thoughtful, I also recommend putting them on a leash at first. Gradually, I build more and more stairs, rewarding them slowly each time they go down until eventually you have a dog that understands not to run up or down the stairs at speed, which also could potentially harm you if they take you out along the way, but instead take their time, go down their stairs in a thoughtful manner. In my house, I actually encourage my dogs to stay behind me as I walk down the stairs. They're not allowed to blast past me. They're not allowed to blast past my children. And this keeps everyone in the family safe. I know I already spoke earlier about dogs being overweight but it's something that I think is very important to highlight from the moment your puppy comes home. Often I have owners who think their young puppy is supposed to be roly-poly. They're not. In fact, you are already putting your puppy at risk by having them be at an increased weight. How many of you put your hands on your dog every single day. This is something that I am very mindful about with my own dogs. I don't look at the recommendations for feeding on the dog food bag or on the container that I serve from. I am going to be physically feeling my dogs to make sure that I can feel their ribs, they're not sticking out, but I can easily feel their ribs, and I see a nice tuck or an hourglass figure in their body. I also wanna see that same tuck underneath their belly. If your dog looks more like a coffee table than an hourglass, there is a problem, and that is also going to be putting your dog at risk of injury. Not only injury, but there have been many studies that have shown that the longevity of your dog's life is directly related to their weight. Some of the longest living dogs in the world live on farms, are constantly in motion. I know that's not possible for everyone, but if you can ensure that every single day your dog is not only walked, but walked to the point of panting and increasing their heart rate, you are going to be doing them a huge favor for the rest of their lives. Because let's face it, we not only want our dogs to live long lives, we want them to live healthy lives. 
I don't want a decrepit old dog that can barely get up from the ground. I want an old dog that feels good and is happy to be moving with me every single day of their lives. I have been looking at dogs and physically touching dogs for a very long time, and I feel quite confident evaluating their body condition. Not every pet owner is going to be. There are a number of resources you can use. Of course, speaking to your own vet, of course, they're going to be a valuable resource. One of the resources that I look to is a body condition score. It rates dogs from one to nine, whether being too thin or a little bit too big. You're looking for that ideal number or of a four or a five that fits all of the criteria that I already discussed. Being able to feel those ribs without having to push too hard, having that nice tuck in their body, that is what you're looking for. If you're not sure, I would absolutely check that resource out or ask your vet about it. Today, we've talked about injury prevention in dogs. But ultimately, this comes back to being a good leader for your dog. In order to make sure that you're not being a bad leader, check out this video. On that note, I'm Instructor Meg. Happy training.